When we call the victim's descendants to share our findings, they tell us, I never thought I'd get this call. The scars remain, and luckily, because we have found documents, so does proof. In 1945, a 46-year-old black man was arrested in St. Augustine, Florida. He was on his way home. Before he, his two brothers, and a friend could get there, they were stopped by a police officer and taken to jail. Three of the four were released quickly. Probably sensing the fourth man, still locked up, might be at risk, they went to get their boss, a white manager at the turpentine camp where they all worked. When the boss arrived at the jail, the fourth man was dead. He had been beaten to death in a cell by the blackjack-wielding police officer who had arrested him. The dead man's name was George Floyd. There were no demonstrations after his death. No lawyer challenged the conclusion of the county coroner's jury that Floyd had resisted arrest. No one questioned the coroner's entry of accident on Floyd's death certificate as the cause of death. A letter to the national NAACP explained that Floyd, unarmed, protested repeated searches of his person in the cell and a scuffle ensued, whereupon the arresting officer beat him to death. The NAACP, overwhelmed with similar cases, could not assist.